Welcome to the Signal RGB Quick Start Guide. This video will guide you through the basics of Signal RGB. The first thing you need to do is make sure that you don't have any conflicting RGB apps running on your computer. Apps such as IQ, Synapse, Armory Crate, or any other RGB application needs to be closed. Be sure to check Task Manager for any XEs that may still be running even after you close these RGB applications. In particular, you'll want to make sure that LightingService.exe isn't running, and if it is, then be sure to end that task. We generally recommend uninstalling all other RGB apps and restarting your PC for the smoothest experience. Now let's get started. Once you're inside of Signal RGB, you'll need to do a few important things. The first is to configure your components. This is applicable to anyone that has RGB fan controllers or anything connected to motherboard headers. Go to the Devices tab under My Rig. At the bottom, you'll see all of your connected devices and controllers. The ones you want to focus on are going to have a yellow warning sign. For this example, I'll configure the Thermaltake fan controller. To access the component configuration, click on this button. Now you should be able to see the physical components flashing the color that is shown on each channel. You can see here that the three Thermaltake fans at the top are flashing red, blue, and green, which matches channel 1, 2, and 3. All of the fans connected to this controller are the same, so I'll load up all three channels with a Thermaltake ring quad fan. You can use the search bar to quickly look up specific components. The process for all controllers and motherboard headers is essentially the same. After you've configured all of your components, you can move on to the Layouts tab, which is located here. This is where you can adjust the positions of your devices and components, which makes all the difference for how effects flow through your entire setup. At first glance, this might seem overwhelming, especially if you have a lot of devices because they'll be scattered around like this. But trust me when I say that the end results are worth it, because you can have lighting that flows across your entire setup. What you'll want to do to make this easier is hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and left-click the eyeball icon on any of the devices. This will hide all of the devices and will make it easy for you to start adjusting them one by one. I recommend starting with everything that's inside your PC tower first. I'll start with the Thermaltake fan, so I'll go ahead and unhide the three fans. You'll know which device you're adjusting because it will start pulsing blue just like this, and you can see it as I select the different fans. Generally speaking, with layouts, you can experiment however you want. But the most popular layout is the one that matches the real positions of your devices. With that being said, I'll place the three fans up here next to each other because that's how they are inside of the actual PC tower. Next, I'll go ahead and unhide the cooler, and you'll notice that the box is really small, and I'll want to make it larger. You can adjust the size of the box in the bottom right corner with a size slider. The reason this is important is because you'll want the devices to capture a decent amount of the effect. So now I'll go ahead and place the cooler right around here. Now I'll unhide the RAM sticks and reduce their size a bit and place them next to the cooler like this. You can start to see how it's forming a layout that matches the actual device positions. You can take a similar approach for all of the devices on your desk and place them in a way that represents how the devices are actually sitting on your desk. A recommendation from me is to make your keyboard have a super large box size and center it like this. This way it will be able to capture the entirety of the effects and it just looks great. Once you've configured the layout for your PC tower and all of your other devices, then you can start playing around with all of the amazing effects in Signal RGB. To get started, go to Home under Library. This is where you can browse our massive library of effects. In the free section, there are over 100 free to use effects. If you support Signal RGB by subscribing to Pro, you'll get access to everything in the Pro section which includes our game integrations. For this example, I'm going to load up the free to use radar effect. You can search for effects using the search bar at the top, just type what you want and hit enter. To load an effect, hover over it and click the install button. As you can see, the radar effect is doing a perfect motion around the entire PC tower. It demonstrates why a proper layout is so important. To customize effects, head over to the Customize tab under My Effects. This is where you can see your effects visualized in real time. All of the customization options are on the right side. Every single effect in Signal RGB has a vast array of customization options, so you can make any effect your own. For this example, I'm going to enable Rainbow Mode and increase the speed, and then disable Blips and Ripples. Now I have a clean rainbow radar effect. 
You can save up to three presets using the A, B, and C buttons right here. All you have to do is click and hold one of them until you see a message that says Effect Preset Saved. Now the customization options I've made to the radar effect are saved on button A, and all I have to do is click it once to load it. You can also reset an effect to its default settings by clicking and holding this reset button right here. This covers everything you need to know to get started using Signal RGB. We'll go deeper into each topic in future tutorials, so keep an eye out for those videos especially if you'd like to learn even more tips and tricks. If you're having trouble with Signal RGB, feel free to stop by our Discord server or contact our official support email.